Neonic Void Productions presents Hello. <laughs> what if I just talk like this all the time? No. With a little pep in my step. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Spookalypse, where um, Housekeeper is is uh, telling me no to being happy and peppy twenty four seven three sixty five. I am your host Zio, and today I'm joined with Peeps. Sorry, Peeps. It's unrealistic. That's not unrealistic. That's total realistic. I'm like this way for seven three sixty five. No, I'm not. Lies and fucking slander. <laughs> no, I'm not. Lies and slander. <laughs> lies, Liza Minnelli. <laughs> yeah, Liza Minnelli. Uh, yeah, we're joined with Bonya, housekeeper, and Mad Chairman. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. no. So like, oh my god, housekeeper. Oh my god, do your job. Take it away. No, uh, I don't want to. What do you mean no? This is your one thing you do. You have no choice. Fucking quit. How about that? Bitch, you weren't getting paid, so what are you going to say you're going to quit? What's that going to get you? A severance package? (laughs) Because, girl, if you're getting a severance package, where's my money? (laughs) Wouldn't you like to know? Here's anyway. your severance package. Ten cents. <laughs> More than what I got. Oh, shit. Anyway. Eat anyway. the ten cents of the bank. Damn. Damn. Okay. Well, anyway, if you like this podcast, I make sure you follow and rate us on whatever sites you listen to your podcast. Share with your friends. New episodes get uploaded every Saturday. Links are down in the description for other podcasts that are part of the Neonic family. Follow us on Twitter. I'm not going to call it that stupid ass name. Um, <laughs> I, I it's fucking dumb, dude. Um, <laughs> uh, our handle is at spook blah 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 at spookocalypse. Yeah. That's at s p o o k o c a l y p s e. We also have a YouTube. If you are from YouTube, hi, hello, welcome. Um, make sure you check out um the other podcasts that are on this channel uh we have a lot of cool shit um make sure that you you know pop a like um hit that subscribe uh button slap that bell you know for notifications and if there's anything that you want to hear us discuss when it comes to something spooky make sure that you drop a comment down let us know how we're doing you know um we're going to be doing some more spooky shit and the mints are going to be on the pillow Mm-hmm. Say slaver mint is fish yeah. and gold. With a hint of uh, fucking boobies. edible gold. With a hint of boobies. Mm-mm. No. Sorry, I'm too busy emailing Jinji Ito to get him on the pod. God, I fucking wish. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine I would die. I would die. I would be like Nick from from what is it, New Girl? Yeah. Whenever like Prince was there. Yeah. And then there he's like, Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't give you a chance to like freak out yet. You may proceed. He's just like like that'd be me. Like <laughs> <laughs> I literally typed into Google search, does Jinji Ito do podcasts? <laughs> Cause God Oh, uh, there's going to be, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a Jinji Ito episode in the future somewhere, somewhere down the line. There's going to be an episode on him. And God, ugh, I can get him on. The be- but I doubt it. Anyway, so Jinji Ito does kind of correlate to the topic because he's stu- he's a student. I call him a student of Lovecraft. And we're today we're doing another Lovecraftian cosmic horror film. 
This one's dealing with more closely related to his work. This film was called Dagon. It is a loosely based on his short story called Dagon and his novella from 1931, The Shadow Over Innsmouth. This movie is a Spanish film. Uh, it is directed by Stuart Gordon. Uh, in my opinion, probably one of his, some of his worst work. This is the same guy who also did Reanimator and From Beyond. This guy does a lot of Lovecraftian horror films. It's like his, it's like a shtick. This is what he does. And uh, this one, mm, choices were made. Choices were made. Uh, but to give a little background on this, uh, kind of give you a little bit of knowledge and hoopla. Hoopla. So the shadow over in's mouth is about a village of half human, half fish people, uh, because these fish people fell to, a um, felt to the, I want to say greed the gifts of some God deep one, not God, I guess. No, he's a great old one to a great old one known as Dagon or father. Dagon. Now Dagon is nothing more than a giant sea monster that started giving birth to the deep ones, which are fish people basically with his mate, mother Hydra. Mother Hydra. She's not even in this movie, but it's just another another great old one, a fucking abomination of the oceans. This is one of the fishy creatures of the Lovecraftian lore. So Dagon's the big old sea monster at the bottom of the ocean, somewhere that all these deep ones follow for him. And he is the um they're the offspring of him. And the and the shadow over in mouth is about this about a, the main character going to a village ran by these things uh, that pose as the townspeople in this town on the coast. Of course, it rains all the time, so these fish people can come out on land and shit. It's a lot. It's a secret cult based in Innsmouth, surrounded by uh, worshipping Dagon. And, but that's kind of the main gist of the story called Dagon, the movie. Uh, so it's about a group of people going to a village that they soon find out that these villagers are nothing more than hybrid fish people with fish people mating with human women. Like an in ins mouth. So, uh, fun fact, the town that this place placed in is, uh, M Boca, which is the Spanish, which is the Spanish adaptation of ins mouth. Or that's the name. Fun facts for all. So, wow. wow. This movie was made in a release in October 12, 2021. Uh, it's in Spanish and English, and it's made 212,699 euros. It didn't make Jack Squat. Now, I will save my opinion of this movie to the very end. But, by the tone of my voice, can you guess what I thought about this movie? But yeah, take it away. <laughs> Is your score a multiple of two? It's somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere like that. Something like that. All right. So plot wise, we we start what off plot? with. <laughs> Don't interrupt. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. So we have our main character, Paul Marsh, who has a dream about some lady. Um, at, no, actually, he's in the sea, the ocean. He's dived deep down, and there's a giant hole with an, an insignia around it. And then this mermaid shows up and scares him with her razor-sharp teeth. And then he wakes up. And then his girlfriend, Barbara... Wants to fool around. He's like, no, I got to check my socks. Which he has a little laptop. And he's checking the socks. And, it, and they explain, like, because of the stocks that he's invested in is why they're so rich. And now they're able to get on this boat in the first place. 
And then yeah. she's like, I wish you'd just stop messing around with the socks. And she shuts the laptop and unplugs it and takes it up to the deck. And then he's like struggling to follow after everybody's like doing that thing. It's like, I got to get my pants on, but I'm also trying to chase after my girlfriend. And then she throws the laptop into the, into the ocean. And he's like, obviously just like, Barbara, what the hell? He's like, look around you. It's beautiful out here. Look at the sun. Enjoy life. And I, I kind of have to agree with Paul. I'm like, that must have been an expensive laptop with a lithium ion battery that you just threw into the ocean. I mean, it could be replaced, but you could have just closed the laptop and went up deck and not done anything. Yeah, but girlfriends don't do that. Girlfriends ruin laptops and, and you know, expensive electronics because they want to throw a temper tantrum. I can't tell if you're being serious or sarcastic. I'm being completely sarcastic. People who do that are <laughs> fucking dumb as hell. Like, I would get mad if someone threw my fucking shit into the fucking ocean. Exactly. I would throw her into the ocean. Even if I could... <laughs> afford to replace i'd like why the hell would you do this no because like i've seen videos of like of like girlfriends like smashing playstations and computers because like their boyfriends play video games too much you know and i'm so like why don't you just play video games with him dude something he obviously enjoys he does shit that you enjoy all the time why don't you put in the like she's just She's being dumb. Well, also, he kind of, like, turned her down from having sex, so. True. It's just, it just seems like an overreaction to destroy his stuff. But other than that, they are up top with Vicky and Howard, who presumably own the boat, and Vicky's doing a little sun tanning. Well, Howard looks like this rich guy who's like, look at me in my boat. Here's my glass of wine. Isn't life wonderful? But other than that, a storm shows up almost seemingly out of nowhere. And then it causes the sh ship to have some rocky waves. And then they hit a rock, like a big rock. And at the same time, Vicky has gone down below deck. And she's down there when they hit the rock, and then she gets trapped between, like, the bed and where the opening of the hole in the ship is. So she's stuck. And they go down there to check on her, and she... Well, she can't move at all. They can't move the bed. And they can't radio contact for anybody. So it's like, okay, take this flare gun and go up top and just shoot, because they can see that there is a, a port side town. And I was like, okay, good idea. Shoot the flare gun and get some attention. But then no one shows up to help them. Because they're like, I don't think there's anyone around. So then Howard's like, okay, I will stay with my wife, Barbara and Paul. You will go to this town and get help. And so they get onto like one of those smaller lifeboats and just go sail to the town. And he's, like, for some reason, he's messing around with the oar, like, I, I can't paddle it because it's not in the little sl slippery, slidey thing where the thing that holds, like, the oars steady was like, you don't have time for this, just paddle. But during their absence, there is an, un an unseen creature from deep below that, will, that attacks the ship while they are away. And it, it kind of looks like oil, like, like Vicky is bleeding, but then there's this black substance. It looks like oil that's getting mixed in with the blood. And this is when the creature shows up. We don't know what it is. But luckily, Barbara and Paul make it ashore, and they don't find anyone in town until they reach the church. And they find a priest. And Barbara, seeing, seeing everyone in the town speak Spanish... In some English, but Barbara knows Spanish, so she's able to communicate with them easily. And then the priest is like, oh, you need help. Okay, talk to the two fishermen at the docks, and they're like, hey, could you volunteer to go out into this raging storm and check on this boat that has two survivors? And it's like, yeah, okay. And they go, and then 
they are, um, let's see. Paul is thinking like, I should stay here because the priest is kind of creepy, Barbara, if you know what I mean. And then she's like, no, I'll stay here. It's fine. So then Paul gets on the ship with the two fishermen. He accidentally like grabs the edge of it. Like he falls onto it and he's like, ow. And then he has this big fish hook stuck in his hand and he has to rip it out. Which looks slightly painful. Although there's a, a weird continuity error where he's holding his left hand closed to hide the blood, even though he punctured his right hand. Just little things like that that might affect our review of this film. It adds up. Yeah. So Barbara stays put and it's like, Do you have a phone? Telefono? And it's like, Yes, we have a phone. You have to go to the hotel to go and call the police and a doctor from somewhere. Because I don't think the town has either of these things. So Paul makes it to the boat and he looks for Vicky and Howard and they're just gone. He sees the towel that Vicky was wearing and it's got lots of blood on it. But he doesn't see any trace of them. So they got to go back to the town, which is called Imboca. And he goes to the hotel where Barbara was sent off to. And there is a scene where Barbara is there and she's talking with the concierge. And he doesn't say anything. He just stares at her. Very obvious gills. <laughs> Gill neck. Yeah. And I believe she tries to pick up the phone and he's like, just like putting his hand on it. Just like, no, don't answer. Don't use phone. Like he doesn't say anything. He's just like, don't use the phone. And then the priest shows up, and then they both, like, kidnap her. Like, I think they choke her out or just like, oh, we're kidnapping you now. Not sure why, but we'll find out later. But earlier, the priest did have evidence of webbed hands. Like, he he sees fingers, and they look webbed. So that's strange. Like, they're fish people. Or something. And then Paul makes it to the hotel and tries to communicate with the concierge. He doesn't know Spanish. He just tries speaking English. The concierge doesn't really help him with anything until it's like, uh, can I get a room? Slowly turns around, see the obvious gills, gets a key, just hands it to him. And Paul's back in back in a room and it's disgusting in here. Clearly not maintained. And he has a dream of the mermaid girl to get up uh, the mermaid girl again. And this is where we start seeing the first evidence of really bad special effects. Where she like screams and tentacles come out of her mouth, but it looks really I don't know, like it's just overlaid on top of the mouth, but not really inside the mouth. Yeah. And sometimes bad special effects can give movies charm. I don't know if it really works here. And so he starts to piece together like, I think the people here are weird. And he like looks outside and he sees a gathering of all these people covered in cloaks and just clothing that covers them up completely. They all look at him and they make these weird fish noises. And then they go rushing up to his hotel room and he's like, oh no, I gotta bolt the door shut. And they're like, there's no bolt lock, but there is oh. on another, um, on a different door, there's a bolt lock. So he has to unscrew yeah. that with a pocket knife and then put it on the other door to buy himself some time. Wow. Even though he might have been able to leave in that same amount of time. He's so smart. But he ends up in like this tannery area like i thought it was like a, a meat packing place but it's it's a tannery and it's full of human skins that are all attached to frames hot oh it was so hot despite how cold it was <laughs> raining and he finds howard's remains that's nice but he escapes the tannery by starting a fire and finds some he finds safety with an old drunken guy named ezekiel and he's the last person who isn't a fish person 
And then Ezekiel explains to Paul about the past, like, okay, here's what happened to our village. And the part of this is there is um, like a remembrance credit for this actor at the end of the movie because he he passed away about two months before the movie was released. Damn. Damn. Yeah, his name was Francisco Rabel or Rabel. May he rest in peace. Yeah. But he was very hard to understand in this movie. Like, it sounds like he had a very thick accent. Yeah. But the general story is, in the town of Imboca, they had to rely on fishing as a means of getting by, but they were not getting a lot of successful catches. Like, very small yields. And then they were like, all that we could really do is pray to our God. And... They're just in church praying, and then some guy shows up. Um, Orpheus Cambaro. And he's like, I have a better god that you can worship. He, you worship him, he'll get you all the fish and gold you could possibly imagine. Oh, no. And then people are like, um, okay, let's, let's ditch Jesus Christ and worship <laughs> Dagon. <laughs> Let's ditch Jesus and go to Dagon. Because if you, I don't know, if like you follow a religion and you're expecting something to happen and then it does happen, you're probably going to follow that God over the God that didn't give you anything. You're right. That's fair. That's fair. Yep. But yeah, they're catching fish and finding gold artifacts in the netting and they're like, look at this. They're so excited for all this gold. And then they eventually outlaw the worship of Christianity. And so they're destroying the statue of God. And that one poor priest gets murdered. And I don't remember what they initially offered. Like they had to do some kind of trade, like more than just worship. But then eventually it's like, well, now we need to do sacrificing. So now um, they had to sacrifice people. I think the first two were Ezekiel's parents. Yeah, I think there's like they kill his father, but then they also force the mom to be bred with Dagon because that's how Dagon propagates. He needs a woman to breed with. Mm. And then corrupted by greed, the villagers and Kimbaro just kept going with this. And Orpheus, the guy who introduces all, is pretty much like the highest ranking member of this new religion of theirs. And then gradually over time, Ezekiel pretty much stays the only human, but then everybody else gradually changes into fish people. Um, over time, the people of Imboka begin to die off, leaving only the half-fish, half-human offspring of Dagon and Dagon's offspring themselves to settle in the village. And they pretty much kill anyone who decides to show up on accent, such as Paul and Barbara. And so Paul's like, okay, Ezekiel, you got to help me escape. And Ezekiel is really hesitant to do this. But he decides to take him to the mayor's manor, which is occupied by Orpheus's grandson, Xavier. And so Ezekiel distracts them by basically being drunk. Like he just... Yeah. He drinks a whole lot and he's just speaking with the guards outside while Paul tries to hotwire the car but ends up making it honk. Fucking idiot. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't know how to hotwire a car. I'm just... But still, could have been a better way. Yeah, could have been. Could have, would have, should have. Yeah, but he also is like, after this, like, oh, shit, I gotta flee. He runs... And then he finds the woman of his dreams, literally, just in a bed by herself. And her name is Uxia, or Uzi. It's spelled U-X-I-A, like one of the legendary Pokemon from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. Oh, one yeah. of the late guardians, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I. You know what? If I saw her in bed, I'm like, oh my god, get up for me. Can you stand up for me? Can, can, can you stand up for me, babe? Let me see. Let me see your legs. Can you stand up for me? <laughs> We're getting to that. <laughs> and yeah, Paul Caesar is like, 
like, oh my God, girl from my dreams. And then the men are still chasing him and he hides behind the the door. And he's just sort of like, please don't tell anyone I'm here. And then they check in the room like, hey, did you see a guy who clearly doesn't belong here, wears glasses, has a bright orange shirt while the rest of us a were A white man? <laughs> yeah, oh, basically wow. the whitest of white nerdy people. Yeah. And it's like, she goes, no, didn't see him. Okay. And then they like start making love. Even though Paul's like, no, I shouldn't. And she's like, you should. Mm-hmm. And then they get into the lovemaking. They get to the touchy-feely part. And it's like, wait a minute. This feels like your legs feel weird. Takes the covers off. It's tentacles. She has multiple large tentacles. And he you know, flees. You know, the first thing I thought of when I saw that? I was like, oh my god, I could just hear Kaiju Groupie. <laughs> You're a tentacle fucker. <laughs> Calling me out. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'd be like, babe, get up for me. You love me, I love you. Then get then stand up on your two feet, babe. Oh no. Damn, yeah. that sucks. Oh. And this part, I don't I... feel like Katamari. This part I don't get. <laughs> Paul does manage to escape a bunch of the villagers in the car, which he failed to hotwire. I'm like, did he get the key at some point? I don't remember that. But yeah, he crashes the car, that. and then he's caught, and they throw him in a barn, and he's reunited with Vicky, Ezekiel, and Barbara. And I think earlier Ezekiel was like, yeah, I saw them kill Barbara with my own eyes clearly didn't it they didn't because barbara's still here yeah i remember that and i was like i thought she was dead yeah i thought barbara did Mm -hmm. oh my fucking god i thought you were dead (laughs) and it's especially surprising that vicky is still alive but she was taken by dagon and he did what he does to propagate his species yup he sure did It was gross. But then they're all like brought before the group and it's like, well, since Vicky is pregnant with Dagon's spawn, we got to keep her alive. And she's like, oh no, I'm going to do the ethical save humanity thing and just cut my stomach open and die in the process. Yeah. She did do that. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, Paul and Ezekiel are separated from Barbara, and they end up in a butchery because they're going to use Barbara as like a replacement for Vicky. And then Ezekiel and Paul are chained up. And it's like, okay, you got you got one chance to worship Dagon. And the priest from earlier is there. So you get one chance to worship Dagon, or we're just going to kill you. And they clearly refuse, and Paul's like, I'm really sorry I got you into this, Ezekiel. And this is kind of a nice scene because like Paul has never shown any signs of like faith at all but then Ezekiel is reciting uh, I don't know I think it's the Lord's Prayer and then he's having trouble remembering but then Paul helps him remember because Ezekiel is like I remember my mother you helped me remember my mother and father who died resisting Dagon in the cult I die a happy man and this scene's kind of brutal because they're using different kinds of knives to slice off his neck and face. They they peel it off like a mask. Yeah. Presumably to add to the tannery. <clears throat> Paul is next to be sliced open, but then Uxia shows up and is like, no, you're not going to kill him. He has to join us. And... I guess she has power over everybody because they all agree. And then they they leave the room. And Paul's like, okay, fine, I'll stay if you let Barbara go. And she's like, no, Barbara has to stay and bear Dagon's child. And Paul seems to concede. But then, yeah, she was like, okay, priest, get us, get us married. We're going to get married and we're going to sacrifice Barbara. But then Paul managed to escape, and he kills the guards, and he gets revenge on the priest. And he's looking for Barbara, collecting a can of kerosene on the way. 
He meets the church, and he's about to burn it down, but he discovers a hidden passage that leads below ground to a ritual chamber. And there we have a bunch of people gathered to prepare a ritual to have Barbara offer to Dagon. And earlier, she mentioned, like, hey, if Dagon gets a hold of me, kill me. Just keep that in mind. It's going to come up next. They chain her to this um, iron thing. It's like you have to grab onto a bar, and you've got these shackles. It's kind of like um, Temple of Doom, where that yeah. poor guy is getting lowered into the pit, and his heart is racing. And it gets burned alive. It's similar to that, just more simplified. Yeah. And so she's getting lowered into this well that has all this tar black water in it. And she's... And and they've stripped her naked. I don't know if that's relevant to anything. I just felt like mentioning it. As my boyfriend says, the only redeeming quality of this movie... And so everyone's chanting for Dagon. I think I think they're literally saying like Cthulhu Fatog and and um that's the only thing I made out. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, a more apparent tie in to Lovecraftian horror. Yeah. And nothing else. So nothing so else. else. But then Paul arrives, not necessarily in the nick of time, but just he just arrives and he attacks a bunch of the villagers, douses them in kerosene, and sets them on fire. And then he operates the device that was lowering Barbara into the pit and dragging her out. And she just looks dead inside and covered in that black tar stuff. And it's pretty much too late. Dagon has already impregnated her. And so Barbara's like, you're going to have to kill me. Like, please kill me. Even though Paul refuses, Dagon himself grabs Barbara and tears her body from the winch, claiming her as his new as new consort. Yeah. And then the other people who were at the ritual who hadn't been attacked yet, they begin to assault Paul. And then Uxia shows up. And then we see a deformed Imbokan, who is Xavier Kambaro. And it turns out it's Uki's dad, but it's also Paul's dad. Paul's real name is Pablo, and he was born here. Uki explains that Paul's human mother escaped from Imboka years ago after being impregnated by Xavier, but now that Paul has returned, he will be Uki's lover, and they will dwell with Dagon forever. Okay. So they're half siblings, and she wants. To get married. Gross. And now Paul's like, I don't really have an escape from this, do I? So then he decides to douse himself in kerosene and light himself on fire. And Uxia grabs him and they fall into the water where Paul is horribly disfigured from the burns. But because of his birth, he is able to breathe underwater because he's got gills. So now it's like, without saying anything in the scene, he's like realizing that he really is one of them. And they go down into that giant hole from his dreams with the big insignia around it. And he just embraces his fate and he follows Uxia down into Dagon's undersea lair. And that's the entirety of Dagon. Yeah. It sure is. <laughs> so, symbolism. <laughs> fish people, the fishiest of people. I don't know what more you can get out of that. Well, I guess it goes with the same Lovecrafting theme of hopelessness and accepting your fate. Like he does in the ending, but that's really it. Yeah, pretty much. And Paul is not that enjoyable of a character. He has this weird thing where he says, okay, there's two possibilities, but he doesn't elaborate on what those possibilities are. 
yeah. for any of the things he says them. Yeah. So this movie was um, hot garbage. Um, I was bored. Tremendously and horrifically bored. Um, I don't know what else to say what else to say about it. It's just I wanted to like this movie a lot. I really did. I just wasn't in it. <laughs> I wasn't in it. I did not enjoy it. It was boring. Snooze fest. <clears throat> like I fall asleep. The story isn't conveyed well. The characters are not all that interesting. The sound effects are every stock effect you've ever heard, especially any kind of door opening. It's the same exact sound. Yeah. We. Although I do like some of the costumes, like the one that Uxie is wearing, where she has her helmet made of gold, and it's like representative of tentacles and Lovecraftian stuff. And what um, Orpheus is wearing in the past, I'm like, oh, that kind of looks nice. Like there was interesting stuff there, but it just it didn't save it to the end. Now to give you a little context. Um, on Rotten Tomatoes, this, gets, this has a 69% rating on uh, the critic side. And some of the comments say, reviews say, this is the best adaptation of anything Lovecraft. And I'm just like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. You're, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what y'all watching, but y'all got me fucked up. That is incorrect. This movie was hot garbage. You want a good Lovecraftian horror film, horror movie with um the same director? Watch Reanimator, much better and funny on top of it. In a comedic campy kind of way. But this this is not it. Nope. Nope. Um I don't know what else uh, uh, what else what else do we, what else do we talk about? Uh uh, everyone else's thoughts? Oh, garbage, hot garbage. Yeah, I got distracted. Oh, didn't we all? Yeah, other activities took place. Oh, god. During oh, that movie. Stop. <laughs> Probably the best part of that movie then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was quite enjoyable. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, five out of five. <laughs> uh, five uh, yeah, that five out of five would uh, 100% do that again. Um, oh my God. <laughs> on my program? If on you my movie, program. <laughs> if you want a movie to Netflix and chill to. Watch Dagon. <laughs> that, that's Ew. great. Yeah. <laughs> Except it's not on Netflix. It, it's not on Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's on Tubi and Chill. It's on Tubi. Tubi and Chill. Tubi and Chill. Tubi has a lot of stuff that you could just tone out and do whatever you want. Yeah, for real. Tubi really and does. Luby. Uh, I was trying to think of one. <laughs> Tubi and Luby. <laughs> I can't with me. I'm done with myself. <laughs> Tubi and Luby, I can't. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, we were all like, we're all like, oh god, this movie. We can't stand this movie. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, we have like about an hour before we have to pick up, <laughs> pick up the boy. Let's go. Like, let's <laughs> the boy. <laughs> Pretty much, that's literally what was the whole conversation. And I was like, down, let's do it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. So, um, and then we watched like the last thirty minutes of it, and we're just all like, um, I'm so we're still going on. Great. Yeah, the movie's over yet. Still yeah, the movie's not over yet. Uh, uh, my boyfriend. Uh, and I quote, "See, this is why I hate horror movies." And I was like, "Damn, dude." He goes, see, life life is just so so bad as it is. 
Like, let's not put more bad into the world with movies like this. And I was like, damn, dude. Oh, man. He's not damn. wrong. He's not wrong. It's just I'm like, dude. Fuck. <laughs> I was like, I mean, you're not wrong, but. Yeah, no. Um, I, f- like, the storyline itself is not bad. The prosecution of it could have been better. You know what I mean? Like, there's potential there. Somewhere. You have to dig deep. But this Deep, is a- deep. The deep ones, I dig deep. Uh-huh. I mean, like, like a deep again, ones pun again. Like the storyline is not bad. Like hearing, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's my bedtime. Um, like hearing the the like the like the plot summary of it, like from Bunyip, like it's not a bad story. I just wish that they did a better job at 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 just doing it. Yeah. I was trying to sound smart, but my brain is fried. Yeah. Um like like those cultists were uh so rating uh 1 out of 5 Sad tentacles. Sad tentacles. Sad tentacles. Sad tentacles. Uh, Bunya. Two. Just straight up two. I enjoyed the retreat more than this. Oh. Damn. And that's a movie that we notoriously just didn't really enjoy. Yeah. Oh, did I watch that one too? I don't even remember. I think that was before Housekeeper joined us. Got it. I think so, yeah. But yeah, uh, story, like I said, story isn't conveyed at all that well, even though it's not a bad story. I don't like the sound effects. I don't like the special visual effects. It's like, and you're, I really don't like Paul as a character because he just seems to not know what he's doing. And in, And even though it's like, oh, he keeps track of his stocks through his computer, None of that pays off any time in the movie. Like, usually you introduce a character who has some kind of profession that gives them skills that pay off some point in the movie. It doesn't. The girlfriend had more skills than he did. <laughs> yeah. The only, so- the only redeeming factor was that final scene where he just accepts his fate and swims into the deep. I was like, that actually turned out pretty good. Just that one scene. Yeah. Um, So I rate this movie a 2 out of 5 as well. 2 out of 5 sad tentacles. Um, This was just not it was boring more than anything. I was snooze fest what what i had to be doing something else because i was falling asleep watching this movie and i don't fall asleep to movie to i mean i fall asleep to movies but like not because of the plot because i'm tired uh the plot was a snooze fest and the execution was shite and if you think that this is a great adaptation of a lovecraft work um you need to rethink your life because it's not and your choice is wrong and oh, watch underwater Just go do better underwater. do better love stuff inspired by lovecraft like underwater or the void so do better do better if you think this movie's fabulous um no no get help get help two out of five <laughs> stop it Stop it. Get some help. (laughs) Get some help. Exactly. Stop it. Get some help. Um, Y'all are are nicer than me. I was going to give it like a one. I was thinking about the same thing. (laughs) 
The movie had potential, but it just it was just wasn't there. Yeah, it wasn't there for me. Like I said, um, I I I went off and did other activities. Um, we went off and did other activities. Uh, I, I if there's ever a chance of, hey yo, people are starting to do a lot of remakes on movies. Fucking make a remake of this, please. Yeah, make a proper adaptation of Dagon or like, a shout over In's mouth. Like I don't want to see no fucking half-ass fucking Disney remake of a fucking Disney animated classic where the the fucking actress hates the story so much, you know, like and talk shit about it as she's acting in the fucking movie. No, I don't want that. I want a remake of a bad movies turned good. Like, can we do that? Studios after you know the strikes and shit, and you guys actually agree to pay actors and writers and shit what they're supposed to be d- do. Can you guys actually go and just remake bad movies? Uh, but yeah. make them better. Like that's a good idea, right? Instead of remaking great movies and making them into shit, and you lose money in your in uh, in your profits. Just 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 putting it out there. You know, free advice from a consumer of movies. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, I think, the meanest I've been in a very long time. Like, fuck that. I'm tired. Remake Dagon. Let's do it. Remake Dagon. Like, like Disney, I know you own a lot of fucking shit. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> You own a lot of fucking studios. Remake this movie. <laughs> Disney remake Dagon. Oh my god! <laughs> Disney made Pulp Fiction. They can make Dagon. Just oh that, my you're god. right. I mean, you're right. You're right. Yeah, they did exactly, exactly. They funded it. They're right. <laughs> they own other studios. They just don't have to put their name on it. They don't have to put their name you're on. Right. It. You're right. Actually, give us the Gamble del Toro. Yes, please. I think he would. L- I think he would vibe with like the shadow over in's mouth or like Dagon and shit. Yeah, give it to him. Like, since Hollywood wants to fucking remake all this shit and do like live action shit of stuff that doesn't need live action adaptations, I'm talking to you, Netflix. Oh, damn. Oh, <laughs> don't come for One Piece. That show's actually good. I haven't watched it. I, I I don't know. I've I've seen other live action adaptations of animes, and they have disappointed me. So most have disappointed me. Actually, pretty much all of them have disappointed me. But this one, this one's like <laughs> the only anyway. quality that I see in that is Zoro. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, Zoro and still it- is sexy in the show. Like, hey, I'll work. Let's do this. But so we got it. a two, two, and a one. Matt German? Yeah, I'm going to give it a one, two. It could not hold my interest. The characters were not good. Like, it, they just weren't good. Like, you can have unlikable characters because we just watched a movie where character was kind of unlikable, but it was still interesting to watch, and it it sucked. So, uh, definitely a, just a straight one, yeah. Average? No, 1.5, y'all. 1.5. Yeah. Do not watch it. You can't on two base for free, but like, yeah, it's there. Just, just save yourself the trouble, man. It's there. Read the book. Read the story. Read a novella. You know, <laughs> the movie oh. that plays in your head is going to be a lot better than the movie that's going to play on your screen. <laughs> so. Yeah, they gonna at least want. At least I'm like I'm interested in reading the original story that it's inspired by. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, the yeah, the story's interesting. Story's good. I love let HP Lovecraft make some in, in, very interesting stories and the lore that has been created is fantastic. Which is why like source material and the, like you use the source material for it and then you come out with garbage, you, you wonder what happened in the process. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, one point five. Watch it if you dare, or not, 
for just reading novella, you know? So that's today's episode, ladies and gents. Um, catch us next time. Let's talk about something else. Actually, next time we're going to be doing something uh, YouTube related. Yay. Yay. So until then, catch y'all next time. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.